Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And it's been a while since I've done just a war recap video. Uh, this is a midweek matchup against Mariana Trench. And I thought it would be a good idea to show it just because, um, you know, Genesis has been struggling recently. We had such a tough loss against Three Point Park uh, with the two Town Hall 11 attacks not being able to be used. So I wanted to kind of show a war where we bounced back. And uh, I'll talk about it in just a moment. But first, so you guys know, you can fill out the poll. I can't do a projections video this week. I'm sorry, two weeks in a row. But at least I have the poll done. So if you want to try to uh, predict all the matchups correctly and win the prize, which will be determined uh, at the end of the season if anyone does actually do that, uh, you can go ahead and check out the link in the description to fill out the poll. And there's only 13 matchups this week because we have the three clans that are no longer in it taking away uh, three of the what would be 16 matchups. So uh, definitely a good opportunity to try to get all of them correct. And uh, good luck to you guys. I should be able to get a normal projections video next week if everything goes right. But just going out of town this weekend makes it tough. So um, in the description once again. Those videos take a long time to make, so that's kind of the only problem, all the editing and stuff. Anyway, Mariana Trench, and I'm going to be fair to them like uh, I was to Genesis against the three-point park war. They did not use five attacks, and if you go to their team, uh, those are attacks. The attacks that were not used were uh, Town Hall 9 attacks, it looks like. So they used where it mattered more, but I'm going to be fair. Um, if they had used those Town Hall 9 attacks, there's a good chance that would have added an extra star or two. Um, not as much as Town Hall 11 attacks, obviously. Those are so much more valuable. But um, being being honest, I think uh, it could have changed the outcome of the war for sure. But still, I mean, Mariana Trench, a very good clan. Nice to put up an awesome war. Uh, going through the basis in terms of what they did, they uh, the, all the 11s two starred and then left. Uh, one, two, three, Town Hall 10s on the board. Uh, we got the 11s, and then we left uh, two Town Hall 10s. Am I missing something? Uh, what am I missing? Was it three 10s? One, two, three. Yeah, they left three 10s. We left two. Only had one 10v10 triple, but the 11s did a great job dipping, and that can uh, that can get it for you. So, hopping into our first attack here. Want to show a 10v11. Uh, tornado top links against this being their number one base and just a nice dragon attack you know this base is i guess to defend against three star attacks using air it has the air defenses offset but when the uh, the defender does that and they put them all out of range of the town hall um very far out of range on this base it really opens up dragons and top links does a good job taking advantage of it i'm not sure if this is actually tornado himself on this base or or on this account right now um because we do uh sometimes let other people attack on these accounts within the clan of course uh so anyway not sure who to give credit for i think it might be oas who ended up uh, using this town hall 10 account uh, so anyway, comes in here with a kind of a funnel on each side, uses the heroes up top, uses a nice bowler bounce there. Look for those double bounces on the bowlers, you can get some awesome value. Gets both storages cleared out with the bowler, pops the queen's ability, gets most of the meaningful CC troops. There is a witch, um, but she's not going to be much of an issue. Then here come the dragons, just dropping those guys on the left side here. Uh, not a whole lot of defenses they can hurt them he has the wizard towers the expos the archer towers but um once again that's not gonna do much damage it's just chipping away at the dragons really and has a few loons from the cc as well as the nice level six dragon good choice to bring that uh two rages next one goes up top the freeze was interesting because the infernos don't do much to your dragons but it helped the balloons get in there. It helped freeze up the sweeper. So uh, definitely a good idea, I think, especially with all the rages he had. He just didn't have a use for like a fifth rage uh, spell. So good stuff. Already got the town hall. That's 50% as well. He got some pretty good percentage with the funnel. The funnel is also a good way to get percentage. His heroes got like six, seven buildings. The bowlers and uh, whatever else he dropped at the bottom got some value. And then a few uh, troops to top it off here. Baby Dragon, right there, a bunch of stuff pops out. The Eagle's actually still up, so uh, I guess, where'd he drop the other Baby Dragon? Oh, I guess he already dropped it. Anyway, uh, about 59%, I think that's all he'll get on this one, not anywhere else to put stuff. 
fast forward to the end here, we'll take a look at the the one 10 v 10 triple we had um, on their bottom town hall 10. No surprise there, really. Those tend to be the easiest bases. Um, there it is. And also, to be fair to Mariana Trench, once again, we had more Town Hall 10s than they did. I think two more, I want to say. Not 100% sure, but I believe it was two more. So that also is going to you know, give an advantage for sure. Probably even more than those five Town Hall 9 attacks they didn't use. I'd say this is even more important, is having the Town Hall 10 advantage. Because the 9 attacks really don't matter as much as the 10 and 11 attacks on a grand scale. And having an extra, I'd say f with two two extra 10s, having extra four uh, attacks for Town Hall 10s, plus having an extra two Town Hall 10 bases they had to worry about made it hard for them. So um, the win comes with an asterisk for sure, but a win's a win, kind of, uh, and we'll take it. Definitely a good way to bounce back from that week against uh, Three Point Park. And we're looking at what should be a matchup we can definitely win next weekend against Fortes LTU, uh, who's 0-6. So we're hoping to uh, to make them 0-7, I guess. Uh, anyway, this is uh, Wiss, Weiss, Wiz. Um, not exactly sure. Somewhat of a new member, I believe, if I'm not mistaken here. Coming in, getting a pretty nice uh, triple. You know, even these Town Hall 10s that have the level 1 Infernos can be hard, especially when some of these Archer Towers and other stuff is upgraded. Wizard Towers are halfway to max at Town Hall 10, etc. So it comes in with the two Lava Hounds, the uh, Balloons. The one thing I will say is those level 1 Infernos are definitely noticeable in terms of the damage and the HP. They uh, go down quite a bit easier to Balloon Drops with the less hit points. <clears throat> and they also don't require a freeze. It's pretty much like they're just uh, slowly tapping away at the balloons, but not anything to really cause them any damage. Mainly the thing they do is block heal. But as you can see right there, the last Inferno goes down. So the heal is back uh, in commission, drops it, gets some okay value from it. Actually has a few hounds left up that he probably wasn't expecting. Two hounds. So not a ton of cleanup, but luckily he saved some minions, a few balloons. So cleanup actually will be pretty quick here. Just about... Uh, 25 30 seconds for cleanup there good attack to uh, Wiss and we'll move on to two uh, Town Hall 9v9s starting with 19 Dirty Dancing uh, had to show this attack because it was really nice and a good kind of strategy at the beginning here a nice technique uh, fast forward to the start drops the archer there's the golem and I like how she kind of cleared out the top compartment here, then let the troops move on to the next level. That's a really nice technique. If you can uh, sneak those wizards in there while the golem's tanking, get those uh, main important defenses taken out, the archer towers, the cannons, then just have your troops advance downwards. Like that compartment's clear, you know, the air defense, the elixir pump don't matter. That's cleared. Now move on. Uh, drop the jump. Nothing flanking. Golemites are tanking. Next golem coming in. And then right here, the funneling uh, could have been a little bit better probably. Maybe a baby dragon more towards the beginning to ensure it because the king does walk, which I don't think is intentional. And about half the bowlers from the CC walk as well. But the, uh, the golems out in front taking, which is the important thing, courtesy of the nice funnel at the beginning, taking out the top of the base there, and also taking out the, the left side at about 9 o'clock, which also makes it so there's no defenses flanking. The queen's going to be on her own pretty much. Uh, she takes out that golem that happened to be in the clan castle, actually. Then right here, as she's targeted, I believe, uh, pops the ability. Here come the hogs. Very nice hog deployment on this one. Um, <clears throat> comes in. With the initial group, some reinforcements, a good heal, especially over the Teslas and the uh, the skeleton traps, and then has one last heal to drop on the group that was getting low from the wizard tower. Could have been a little bit lower to heal the other group, but oh well. Um, they wouldn't have probably been in range anyway. So sends in the last few hogs, has a few loons, which I, I kind of like, because if you think about it, loons are more valuable oftentimes right at the end of the attack if it's going to be close because cannons, mortars, bomb towers, even wizard towers don't do much damage to it. So there's a lot of defenses that can't really hurt your loons. And it's better than dropping one hog if you can drop one loon, especially if it's on the outside of the base and you can target it very easily. They do a lot more damage. They have slightly more hit points. Uh, yeah, slightly more hit points, I think. And... Um, 
they are sometimes a good good to bring a few of them just to have in case there's like two cannons left up. It's going to be a lot better than having a hog. I'm um, assuming you don't hit like a seeking air mine, which would kind of suck. But um, yeah, that can open a whole new can of worms if you spring a bunch of traps or something. So just kind of something you have to think about, test out. Uh, this is Sir for our final attack here with a uh, Bolo. No. Go Bolo. Yeah, I believe a Go Bolo would be the abbreviation for it. Nice stuff here. Drops the Golem. Um, the CC troops come right out. Poison. Luckily, the Golem doesn't take too much damage. Uh, it's able to stay up and tank for those defenses to go down. What he's doing is he's creating a funnel because it's very difficult to funnel on the corner of a compartment, especially when you're dealing with bowlers. So it really has to get all this stuff taken out. Actually, probably best that that one Golem didn't reroute back on in. That way it can tank so the Archer Tower and that cannon go down. And then here go the bowlers. Uh, nice that the bomb tower was left up to kind of draw them in. Then the CC, then they'll take the jump. So good progression. One thing I would have liked to see is a wizard on that wizard tower. Just a free defense to take out. But um, I guess he wants to save those for cleanup and focus on uh, the main force, you know, dropping the spells correctly, all that stuff. There's the rage, there's the heal. And one thing, if I can be nitpicky for a second, because um, this is a nice attack, you don't want to drop your rage and your heal right on top of each other. Because the rage tends to push the troops out of the heal if they're in the exact same spot. Sometimes it's better to either heal them, let them get the benefit of the heal, just let them relax, take the heal. As, le as long as they're not taking a ton of damage and you've got to get them through the base, let them sit back, take the heal, then rage them through. Or, or rage them if they're still at full health, then once they start to take damage, hit giant bombs, then get that heal down. Not a big deal, but... If, um, if I can be nitpicky, don't drop the Rage and the Heal in the exact same spot because you're just going to push your troops out of the Heal. Unless, like I said, there's a ton of stuff, a ton of uh, defenses all right there for um, to, be, to have to worry about. Because then you do want to heal them for sure. And you also want to Rage them so they don't just sit, sit there dying. But a Swag Heal, so uh, definitely crush this base. Nice Swag Heal. Good stuff to Sir. Hope you guys liked the, uh, the recap in a while. Couldn't show that many attacks, just, you know, how to get a quick video out for tonight. Um, spent some time making the poll, so that will be in the description below. Be sure to fill that out. And uh, almost at 25K subs, have some really, really cool stuff. And I mean it more than just adding a new video and having a survey or whatever. Some actually really cool stuff. So be sure to, uh, to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to get others to subscribe. And uh, about 200, 250 left to go. So shouldn't take long at all. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.